911 emergency. Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome to a new video on Ready or Not. The trailer you just saw accompanied the second death blog, which is entitled An Era Approaches, and well, I'm excited to see and hear new things about the game. So let's have a look at what's been going on. Ready or Not has had some frantic last few months since our announcement. We've gathered a lot of attention and support, which has cemented our view that people are ready for a complete, authentic, police-based tactical FPS. Fuck yeah, we are. There's a fair bit of news to go through, so let's get started by running through some features. Awesome. So we have a UI. Contemporary UI design seems to be intent on forcing the player to drag their focus around the screen unnecessarily, instead of their focus being on their surroundings and situation. Yeah, that seems... seems... Fair, yeah. We aim to fix this with the inclusion of our internally named Swiss Army UI. This element provides the player with information such as player speed, orientation, lean direction, weapon control and two pop-up radial menus. The aim of the Swiss Army UI is to keep the player's line of focus vertically centric with the crosshair. So this is all of this stuff is basically going to be underneath the crosshair, but not spread out all over the screen in like the top left, top right, bottom left, etc, etc. Um, yeah, while not obfusca obfuscating the view. Below we have some gifts of the current iteration of that in action. So I guess we can go full screen. We have a compass or some sort of thing like that. I suppose, yeah, this is showing where you're leaning or looking around, I suppose. Shooting? I'm not entirely sure. I noticed him shooting, and I noticed this little thing um, enlarging. So I'm not entirely sure. Like right now he's leaning out to the right, leaning out to the left, I suppose. Looking down, looking up. It's an interesting bit of uh, stuff going on there. I'm not entirely sure what it is supposed to represent. But I guess we'll find out more later. So, uh, new visual effects, impact effects, kick up, long-lasting clouds of dust, bullet ricochets spark and sputter, guns kick up particles when fired close to objects, and we've added in parallax occlusion mapped, mapped bullet holes for relevant materials. These POM mesh impacts add an extra level of punch to your weapons, giving the illusion that your rifle is yanking out chunks of wall with every shot. We're very happy to have implemented this and so quickly, as it is an underutilized technique. Yes, I would say so. Let's have a look at that stuff in action. It's a bit of loading time. But yeah, you can see, you know, how 3D that looks. That is awesome. That actually is 3D. <laughs> that is impressive. I hope this stuff will stay around for the duration of missions as well, because if this fades away, that's just going, yeah, that's, it's, it's still impressive, but, you know, it's going to be more impressive if it just sticks around. So below, an officer fires an MPL into a set of various materials to create a cloud of matter. This showcases how the individual particle of, 
particle effects work together to provide greater visual feedback. So yeah, definitely spraying all over the place. Looks like a mattress or some kind of dry, yeah, drywall, wood stuff. I'm not entirely sure what this blue stuff is going to be. Water, maybe? Looks like it might be water. You know, not animated water, but I think it's going to represent water or something like that. Also, we have weapon attachments. So the current inclusion of a myriad of collimated weapon optics will give units a greater degree of freedom when it comes to how they want to handle the situation or when it comes to choosing a more comfortable sight picture. These attachments and all future ones will only be applicable to weapons with the appropri appropriate real systems and support. So let's have a look at that YouTube video. Right, so I've never used one of these things in real life, so I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is. But I suppose it is accurate enough. I don't know. If anybody has used this stuff in real life, well, let me know in the comments below. What do you think about this? Because to me it looks good, you know. It's going to be hard to use when you're moving around, and that is exactly the point, right? We also have projectile dynamics. Um, let's see, they've included some more information on our projectile dynamics, showcasing bullet ballistic penetration power and material ricochet likelihoods. When firing at or through objects, I suppose, um, users will receive a much more predictable projectile trajectory if bullets impact parallel to your position. Um, Alright. Higher hit angles will result in larger trajectory offsets or even ricochet the bullets when the appropriate surface is, Im surface is impacted. The aim is to make combat more frantic and unpredictable when an officer misses his shots, ensuring player players consider all options before they engage. And yeah, if we open up this thing, you can see this is shooting straight through the wall and it is more or less pretty straight, you know, it's pretty accurate. You don't want to do this all the time because if a hostage is standing in front of a tango, well, the hostage is going to get hit as well. This is a door that is half opened, and I guess this is what they mean. I didn't entirely catch the drift, but now that we see it, yeah, I can definitely see what's going on there. So basically what happens is, if you shoot for the wall like this, it is just like, um, I don't know, let's take a measurement of two centimeters wide, right? So you shoot through two centimeters worth of material, but if the door is at an angle, it's no longer going to be just two centimeters, it might be two and a half centimeters, or maybe three. And, you know, the further the angle, the more wood or material the bullet has to pass through, and that is going to change the way it exits and the way it is going to lose speed and things like that. So yeah, you can definitely see the difference in what's going on here. This is straight through the wall, this is at a slight angle of 45 degrees, this is at a huge angle, and now bullets just fly all over the place, and it's very unpredictable. <laughs> As you can see, this guy is dead, this guy is dead, this guy is clipped, and that guy just b lost both arms, <laughs> basically. So yeah, pretty crazy stuff. All right, we have also patch customization. This is always a pretty cool um, thing to have. Ground Branch has this, Arma has it as well, and it's always really cool. So players can now assign an image to their officer's shoulders by entering any valid URL. This supports files that include an alpha channel. All right, so right now we have the Los Angeles SWAT police, and then you can see on the character it shows up on his shoulder. And I actually kind of wanted to turn this around, but I can't, of course, because it is a picture. And yeah, that's not going to happen. As for community, we have great news. We've received overwhelming support from everybody regarding Ready or Not, with a lot of individuals claiming they'd be willing to pitch in what they could to help this game grow. This rally of support was unexpected, and Void is glad, which is Void Interactive, of course, the development studio is glad that we have such an enthusiastic audience. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. However, our company recently completed negotiations with an investor, effect effectively cementing the ability for us to develop an on ready or not in a more permanent fashion. That is excellent news. That makes it all the more likely that this game will have proper funding, and that means it is going to be a better game, or at least it is more likely to be a good game. And that is definitely very, very good news. And damn it, look at that. The art in this game is really good. Also, they have an expansion for the team. So they've taken to bolstering their development team somewhat with adding a technical animator and an AI programmer to the ranks. 
while we're still sorting things out, so the plan is to speed up development even more than before, so we can get this title to our audience faster. <laughs> and I'm happy about that. So, and this is of course the trailer that was at the start of this video. So, lots of good things happening, especially the news about them getting outside backing. You know, as long as that doesn't mess with their original goals, because, you know, that would be bad. If it's going to mess with their goals, which, you know, they're not talking about. But, you know, if that means that they would have to take out the dead child that we saw in the trailer, that would be bad. Because that, you know, as horrible as it sounds, that made me really excited. Because I believe games have a place or an ability to teach us more. You know, to teach us something. It's not just entertainment. You can learn something from it. And... This game could be an insight into what it is like to be a SWAT member, you know, the things they might encounter instead of just, you know, the action and going after gang members and doing drug busts and things like that, you know, all of the high action stuff. It's not all that, you know, they also see really horrible stuff, which might include that children and it's good for people to be aware of it, you know, and if you can do it in movies, then I feel that if you can do it tastefully in a video game, then you should or well you could you know and i really want to see that i think that is awesome same for the gore system which they shown a little bit about they did say that the character who was bleeding out and gurgling on the floor was um pre-made wasn't an in-game animation i think but it is something um as somewhat of a showcase of the direction they want to move in and i definitely hope they move as far into that direction as they can while still being tasteful, you know, that's the that's the big thing. We don't we don't want this to turn into Soldier of Fortune. We want this to be more like Red Orchestra True uh, 2 with the death screams they had there. You know, that game made you feel bad for sol for the soldiers in that conflict, you know. Yeah, you had people screaming for their mothers and crying and it was all done so well and so realistically that, you know, it was immersive. And then when you shot someone, you didn't feel good about it, you know? It was a, a, a reminder that you're not just shooting at, at you know, um, faceless minions of the great evil, you know? The German you shot has a family, and they're going to miss him, and they love him. So, you know, you didn't just hurt a single figure, you just hurt an entire group of people. And I think if they can do something like that in this game, that would, that would be one of the best things ever. I've longed for a game to do more with that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's it for this video. So please leave a like and a comment below and let me know what you think about this game, where you hope it goes, and you know, your thoughts on the on the news in Deathbot 2. And I'll see you guys for the next video.